Hello, hello, everyone. Wow, the weeks go fast, don't they? And I'd actually gone out to uh, grab a glass of water and I walked in my office without it. So <laughs> hopefully I'll be able to make it through this session today without too much issue. But thanks for joining me on this Wednesday afternoon, last Wednesday of October. And Halloween is just around the corner. So I wanted to touch on something that I've never shared before. And that is the five ghost direction. I thought it might be highly um, fun to talk about the ghost direction <laughs> since we're so close to Halloween. Um, I actually had forgotten what I was going to talk about today. <laughs> so I had to pull everything together really quick. And we're going to talk about feng shui. So the last couple of weeks, we have been delving into... Um, delving into different aspects of your chart. And today I wanted to still touch on one of those aspects of the chart. But uh, first I wanted to say, if you're finding these live events, whether you're watching live or in person, I see that there's quite a few people that watch the rebroadcast of this. If you feel that they are beneficial and you know someone out there that might get some great insights and information from them, I invite you to please comment on the video and also to share it with your friends because that's the way that I can reach more people and that's truly my goal is to help individuals accelerate their lives as far as their lives as far as living authentically and in harmony and creating their destiny living the life that they're really here to live rather than worrying being in fear and frustrated with everything that's going on around them and around the world so again, I'm live every Wednesday at 4 p.m. Central. I'll be actually coming to you live from Taos, New Mexico next week. But I'll be talking about, next week, I'll be talking about Hour of Power. And I'm going to start providing the Hour of Power where you can actually make some really great forward momentum and progress in your life if you simply use maybe 15 minutes of that hour to really sit and think about your life and what you want to get out of it. And think of it this way. When you go on a vacation, you don't just wake up one morning and say, oh, I'm going on vacation. You actually take the time to plan. You take the time to check out the location that you're going to stay, you book your flight, you make sure you have a passport, you look for great restaurants and things to do. You plan out everything for that short week long, or maybe even two weeks if you're lucky vacation. Do you ever do that with your life? Do you sit down and think about, wow, what do I want my life to look like? Not just this year, but in two years and three years and four years and five years. And that's what the hour of power is all about is to give you that elevated sense of being able to think clearly and plan out what you want your life to look like like you'd plan a vacation. So let's get started on our topic today, because I know I'm kind of anxious to share this with you. And the first thing I have to tell you is the difference between the type of feng shui that I practice and what you may think of as feng shui. So feng shui normally in the United States is thought of as placement of objects and like furniture. Uh, it's about, they think it's about color. Um, so the easiest way for me to put this into your head is to talk about a Chinese restaurant. When you look at a Chinese restaurant, most of, most of that is culture, the red door. Everybody says, oh, for good feng shui, you need a red front door. That's not the case at all. It's a culture that was transferred to how the Western feng shui practice evolved. So when I study feng shui, this is actually a picture I took when I was over in China, on my China excursion, you can see the dragons on the top of this building. The dragons themselves are not feng shui. This is a cultural thing. However, when the ancient text referred to dragons, when it was transferred into here into the United States, westernized feng shui said, oh, we must place a dragon statue in that area of the house. 
When in reality, when they speak about dragons in classical feng shui, they're talking about the mountains and they're talking about the rivers, the way the dragons flow, the way the dragons move. It's the way the energy is and the chi is flowing around those mountains. <clears throat> so when we were tested uh, in my high level classes to get our degrees, one of our um, tests was on this huge <laughs> shopping complex that was being built. All we had was this model and the building site. And we had to choose the best feng shui location for the pseudo client in this building so that they would have a very successful store, a very successful retail shop. Most of our time was spent analyzing the property, which you can see here that was under construction at the time. But in the background, you can see the hill, the hills in the background, and those mountains go off in the picture off to the left, um, upper left hand corner. That's the dragon. So we had to capture the energy of the dragon, we had to be looking at the way the, the, the roads were intersecting, and they had a bridge and how that bridge was influencing the site. So that then we could tell where's the chi coming in, and which location would we place our client. So that's the type of feng shui I practice. It is taking an existing property, factoring in where's the energy flowing and who the individual is that's living there. And if you've been watching over the past few weeks, you've seen how individualized feng shui really is because you will interact differently with the home than your neighbor or even your, your spouse or even your sibling. So we do have to look at who the people are that are living in that building and make sure everything is fitting together. So how important is feng shui in your home? When feng shui goes wrong, things that you'll see happening is individuals in your house falling sick, sometimes with unknown causes. Tempers are elevated, so bad tempers, you are easily agitated or someone else in your house is easily, easily agitated. Career obstructions, your career just isn't flowing smoothly. You don't really feel you have a good direction in life. There's a diminished passion for things you once loved. And there's lots of negativity. And that negativity can let, lead to abuse of alcohol or other type of abuses. And I've seen that. Now, it's not always in mom and dad, but sometimes it's in the kids and the way that they're interacting with their bedrooms and the house in general. And we can fix that. When feng shui is good, and there's no such thing as perfect, when feng shui is good, what you will experience is positivity and vibrant energy. Opportunities seem to fall in your lap. Serendipity happens. You get support from helpful people around you. Recognition is easier to come by. You have a lot more peace and ease in your relationships, more happiness and fulfillment, and protection from serious things around you, serious calamities. Your house can actually pay a role in keeping you healthy, even when we have a pandemic like going on with COVID-19. So today I wanted to talk about the most important areas of your home, but let me just tell you this quick story about serendipity. Um, whenever I tell this story, people are like, you've got to be kidding, that happened. And I said, yes, <laughs> it happened. So I, we set out to sell our house uh, in western, the a western, far western suburb of, of Minnesota. And we knew we wanted to rent. So we set out to sell the house and it took a really long time. We had listed it, it didn't sell. We had listed it, it didn't sell. We listed it and didn't sell. Now you may say, well, Amy, you're a feng shui practitioner, you should be able to help it sell. Yes, however, there was something bigger at play here. So when we put it on the market, last spring, so spring of 2020, it was February, within, on the same day we listed it, now we had been trying to sell it for the nine months prior, nine to 10 months prior, and nothing, we'd had it off the market for 10 days, all we did was we did a, uh, we got rid of a couple pieces of furniture and painted. We didn't change the price. The day it was listed, we had our first offer. By the end of the week, we had four offers. We chose the offer and we were to close the end of March of 2020. So then the scramble began, where are we going to go? Because we didn't have a place at that point. 
So we quickly found a place to rent, but it wasn't going to be ready until May. And we thought, oh boy. So we let's look at an Airbnb so we don't have to move twice. So we found an Airbnb. And just before we signed on that Airbnb, my husband looked at the internet. He looked on Craigslist of all places. And he scrolled through rentals and he's like, oh my gosh, that's our house. Well, when my husband and I were married 26 years, 27 years ago, we built a beautiful home in, a, in Minnetonka, so a suburb of Minneapolis, Minnesota. And we'd always joked about, wouldn't it be great to go back there and live? And we'd even joked during this time when we were selling the house, oh, we should just go knock on the door and see if they'll rent it to us or if they're interested in moving. That's the house that came up for rent. He contacted the gentleman on the listing, found out it was the exact same owner we had sold it to 24 years prior. He remembered us. He said, absolutely, we would love for you to rent. We know you will take better care of it than anyone else. And long story short, we only had to be in a short-term rental for two weeks because the house that I'm in right now is the home I built way back 27 years ago. And if you would have told me I'd be back living in this house, I'd have thought you're crazy. But that's serendipity. I had my existing home set up correctly to support our life. And the feng shui went to work on our behalf to put us back in the home that we built and we're thrilled to be here. So that's the power of good feng shui. So you are going to need a piece from your Bazi calculator today because we need to figure out number one, your identity palace. That's the palace that influences you and your ghost palace. So head over to my website if you haven't done it yet. It's amytyson.com. My last name is T-H-E-I-S-E-N.com. Or simply listen to what I'll share today, and then you can come back and do that later and rewatch this video when, um, when you have that information. Let me hide that. All right. So once you've entered your Bazi calculator information, I will say that the print function is now working on the site. The developer has fixed it. However, it doesn't print the piece I really need for today. So you are able to print your Bazi chart out. You just won't get your best directions, which we'll be using today. So feel free to do that. If you don't have it printed out, the print function is there. Just scroll to the bottom of the chart that's generated and you'll see the print key right there. But we are looking at this aspect again. So last week we talked about best directions and how to use them facing when you are in a meeting or when you're working in general in your office during the day and when you're sleeping at night. So today we're gonna focus on this little guy right here. This is labeled career. Um, and this is the fourth direction noted on your personal report. So the fourth direction under your lucky directions is the one we're gonna pay attention first. This is called your identity palace and it is the single most important area of your house. It governs who you are. It also governs your intelligence and how you view yourself. So it plays a significant role in your self-confidence and your self-esteem. So if you live in a house where your self-esteem palace or your identity palace is missing, it means you're not going to feel like you belong in that house or you're not supported in the house and you're going to find it harder to connect with the rest of the family in your home. And I've had clients where this has been the case, where their personal identity palace is missing and they always just feel uncomfortable. They wanna come home and be able to relax after a long day work of work. But when they get there, they just, they just don't feel it. So if this area of your house is gloomy or it's cluttered, or it's clogged up with negative formations that are affecting it, you are going to be gloomier. You're going to be a gloomier, negative, more negative version of yourself. So we want to make sure that you are finding your identity palace and make sure that you are, um, that it is intact. Because if it's not intact, you become negative and more argumentative and you have a harder time learning and moving forward. All right, so the example I just presented, 
this individual's identity palace was north. All right. So north, if we were to look at this house, the reference point is the center of the house. North in this house is this triangle right here. So this individual would actually have a really nice intact north section of the house. So they'll feel rather comfortable. They'll feel like they can relax here. So then step two is to actually go to the identity location in your from your chart in your house and make sure that it's clear, it's not cluttered. Um, you can place items and pictures and things to remind you, um, things like uh, uh, posters or pictures of people you admire or your mentor, uh, people or things that you've won, awards or recognition that you've received. Make that area a, a personal kind of pump up area in your house to keep your energy high. So once you go to that area of your house, just look around. If it is cramped or crowded or it's a back entry that happens to collect all the shoes, do your best to clean it up. Then I want you to look outside. What is outside that area? So you're actually physically looking out the window or you're going outside and you're looking around. Do you see a cell phone tower, a water tower? Do you see a dead tree? Do you see lots of over overgrowth? Is there something like a sharp object pointing at that area. If you have something like that, it's going to affect who you are as a person. Now, the key here is you want to be looking at the identity palaces of anyone else that's living in your house and making sure that it is cleaned up, that it is not being affected by anything, and that everyone in your home feels supported as well in that house like you do. Once you clean that up or recognize that you have your identity palace, what you will see is you'll be able to gain, gain more clarity and you'll be able to overcome your limitations. So if you're seeing one of your kids having a harder time in school or maybe your spouse is having a hard time getting recognized, take a look at the identity palace and how it expresses in your personal house. That could be all that needs to be fixed. So I'm going to give you an example of this house. Notice all of the missing areas in this house. And L-shaped houses are very common. And for those of us that live in cold weather climates, our garages are attached to the home, oftentimes as an offshoot from the house. And this can cause missing sectors. So if you're a realtor and you go into a house that has a missing sector and your client just goes, oh, I just don't like it. It could be they're picking up on that subtle energy that it doesn't have their identity palace and it is not a good fit for them and they'll never feel comfortable, have recognition and have clarity in their lives to move forward. Now in this one, if we take a look at where North is, see North right here. So it would be this area of the house, the North sector. So I'm choosing North because that was the example I gave. For this individual, if someone with a north sector as their identity palace lived in this house, they would really struggle because it is missing. There's hardly anything here in the north for them to feel secure in that house. And this can cause depression and it can cause a tendency to want to overindulge in aspects like alcohol or, or worse. All right, so check your identity palace. What do you do? Make sure there's sunlight coming into that area. So if it's an area that you always have the curtains pulled, make sure you're opening them up for a couple hours a day. Make sure they're outside. Again, no pillars, no dead trees, no stagnant water. If there is, clean it up the best you can. Then place things in that area that give you energy or represent your business, represent your heroes, your mentors, or who you want to be. And since I didn't get a question this week, I want to do another one. This is the ghost energy. <laughs> so this is not one of the great directions for us. This is a direction that's considered um, the setback direction, the illness location, and we call it five ghost. 
So the, the modernized Western English translations here are setbacks and illness, but we call it five ghost in feng shui. And since we're coming up on Halloween, I thought it would be fun to talk about this one. So it's located in your unlucky direction column. It's the third one. In this example, it's the Northwest. All right. Yours, remember, is likely different. Some of you might be Northwest. Others of you, it could be North. It could be Southeast, West, etc. So last week I talked about good directions to face. This is one of those that you would not want to use to face or use in meetings. So we're talking now about actual location and feng shui of your home. So the five ghost is the setback area. It's the illness area. And it brings about people who talk about you behind your back. It's those petty people, those gossipers that are always spreading rumors. So if your five ghost location is used for your bedroom or you're sleeping in that direction, so this individual example, if they were sleeping with their head to the Northwest, <laughs> there's a high possibility they're having dreams that their spouse is having an affair. I don't care if it's male or female, they will be dreaming about an affair that their spouse is having. So if that is something that has reared its head in your life, you may want to check to make sure that you're not sleeping the direction of the five ghosts in your personal chart. All right. It could also bring about chronic illnesses for people. Um, so just check. That's the first thing you could check. Are you sleeping the direction of your five ghosts? So let's see how it expresses when we look at the feng shui of a house. So I said that the Northwest is the five ghost direction. So if we take a look here in our example, Northwest right here. Now in this house, this is the outside wall. This is a porch, so it's not included when we look at the footprint of the house because the porch is open. It's not a four season porch and enclosed on all side. So we do have about half of the Northwest um, accounted for. We are missing all of this piece of Northwest here, actually all the way up to there. So this is a partial. So half of it's present. It could cause some issues for an individual that has this as their five, five ghost location, but not too serious. So one of the things that's affected if you don't have a full five ghost palace location is that your intuition or your ability to see important information um, is compromised, okay? It silences it. It like hides it from you. So it means um, you also won't be worrying about unimportant stuff. <laughs> so it's kind of a double thing, okay? So when your five ghost palace is intact, your intuition will come up. You will have the ability to get those aha moments more easily and you'll be able to not think about things that are unimportant. Okay, so what does that mean? Not thinking about things that are, un that are unimportant. Oftentimes when we have a choice facing us, we get caught up on all the little details and we're not sure which details to pay attention to and which not to. What the five ghost sector will do when it is fully intact is will it'll allow you to siphon, siphon through and just say, that's not important, that's not important, that's not important, this is important. And so you can actually see the issue and make decisions and intuitively know what the right choice would be. All right, so the second floor plan example, let's take a look at this one. Northwest is right here. Again, only a little tiny sliver of Northwest is focused here. Um, so this is likely going to give rise to a person who's not comfortable in this house, worries a lot, believes her husband is having an affair because the chart was of a female. Overall, this fit, this house is not a good fit for this female. Um, I see clients who were single when they bought their house. They love their house. And then they bring their spouse to the house and the spouse, their relationship starts to deteriorate because the spouse isn't supported like the original owner and their, their significant other is or was before they moved in. So what I'd like you to do is check your personal five ghost 
slash illness slash setback location. Number one, make sure it is present in your home. And again, look outside, make sure nothing's affecting it. Make sure that there's good amount of sunlight that gets in there. Open the curtains at least a couple hours each day. And then make sure that no one's doing construction right out there. Because when there's construction going on around your house, it will affect facets of your home and therefore you as well. Make sure there's no stagnant water. If there is, clean it up. Because all of those negative factors will influence you negatively at work as well. So if the area is intact and it's good, then you can have breakthroughs. You will have breakthroughs. You'll have better mindfulness in your life and you'll be able to see opportunity more clearly. So the lesson I hope that you, information and lesson I hope you take from today is that while your house doesn't have to be complete like a square, <laughs> it does need to have every palace largely intact in order to support the occupants. But it also shows that different people will have different levels of success in a home based on who they are and how the palaces are laid out in the house. So I truly hope you enjoyed today's session. I had a blast talking to you. If you want an insight or you have a question that you'd like answered about your life, send me a message. Just send me an email, amy at amytyson.com. Maybe I'll feature your question next week. Otherwise, we will be back here next Wednesday at 4 o'clock. I will be again talking about the hour of power, how to help use, how to use a strategic hour of the day so that you can move your life forward and plan to succeed rather than just let thing, letting things slide and go for yet another year. And don't forget, I have my December 11th summit coming up. The year of the water tiger is just around the corner. We're going to be feeling that tiger's energy start to come in pretty quick here. Mid-November, we're going to start to see some shifting going on with, with ox slowly leaving and tiger coming in uh, by December, January, and then February 4th is the beginning of the tiger year. So what else is coming? We've got an eclipse coming on December 4th, and that's going to influence us and what happens in the year of the tiger. If you'd like to find out what the Tiger Year 2022 holds for you, sign up for the December 11th event. And I'm also going to put a very special um, link in the comments of these videos this week. And it is a link to get the download of all four free ebooks off my website, along with a seven minute connection meditation that I've been using it several times now. If you've ever feel a little irritated or just bummed out about something, you take that six or it's like six or seven minute and do that meditation. And it's amazing the difference that you feel once you've done it. So I'm, I'm going to give that as a gift as well. So I'll pop that in the comments section as soon as we wind up to today's broadcast. And if you found this beneficial, liked the information, I invite you to please help me spread the word and uh, get this information into the hands of other people that you think could benefit and enjoy it simply by sharing these videos. But give me a comment and I will see you here next week. Thanks for watching everybody and have a great rest of your week. Bye-bye. <laughs>